Race about to begin. Take a look at the Fuso grid. We'll find Mark Scaife and Rick Kelly side by side. Scaife had a really good start yesterday. He rounded up his teammate, Wind Cup and Winterbottom. Both Mark Winterbottom and his teammate, Stephen Richards, were just out there plying their trade in race one and they were rewarded with top five finishes. Will Davison, a good mover. Craig Lowndes, the biggest mover from 23rd up to seventh. We know the story of Todd Kelly. Greg Murphy, also a big mover. He started 16th and was actually up to sixth at one stage before a little bit of a mistake pushed him down a couple. So it's good to see the smile back on Greg Murphy's face. His teammate a couple of rows back and there's Stephen Johnson and Fabian Coulthard from Team Sirame Wines finished inside the points. The investigating and prosecuting officer to and uh, in concert with the stewards, looked into race one yesterday, a number of different incidents. No breaches of the rules were found. Various drivers with a lot of damage to their cars at the end of the race, including James Courtney, Jason Bright, that nose to tail contact that happened down at turn three. A lot of damage done down there. Dean uh, Canto's car was involved in that as well. Both the team BOC cars managed to get together and so did both Jack Daniels' cars covered off Garth Tander who's up the rear of the grid here with a problem with the front suspension on his car. An oil pump belt off Paul Morris's car and we'll be looking here shortly for Russell Ingle at the back of the Fuso grid. There's Garth, look at him, he's got a huge job ahead of him and as Matthew pointed out a moment ago, an enormous amount of spray to deal with. Russell's noted as a wet weather runner but he's going to really test that talent today. Paul Morris, as I said before, starting up the back. So tough day at the office for these guys 46 laps wet track subtle changes to the cars to try and make them behave in these awkward conditions it was interesting to note who really made the moves throughout race one not only the guys with plenty of championship experience but also experience here neil mark scaife of course made his move early he's a four-time winner in the supercar era here a six-time winner at this track greg murphy pushed his way through we can see Paul Morris will start from pit lane. Greg Murphy won here in 1997. You mentioned Ingle will start from the back of the grid today. He's a winner in 2005. And Craig Lowndes, who made up some 16 spots yesterday, is the defending champion here and also a winner back in 98. Well, these wet conditions aren't going to be treacherous. I spoke to Tim Edwards earlier this morning with the rain. I said, what do you make of this, mate? He's the boss at FBR. He said, this is going to be very interesting indeed. Greg Murphy, however, said he can't remember the last time he raced a V8 supercar in the rain at Oran Park. Thinks he probably hasn't done it at all. Rob Crawford from Toll said, I've got the panel beaters uh, number programmed into speed dial. We'll get it happening. Tasman Motorsport have got everything they need for panel beating. In fact, out in the garage right now. Slide hammers, everything else that you require. On the flip side, Lounsey earlier said, bring it on. Sometimes on days like this, the littlest problem can be the biggest drama. Paul Morris has already been back in the pits. He's got a problem with his windscreen wiper actually catching, so they've tried to fix that up. And guys, don't worry about Garth Tander starting down towards the rear of the field. In race three last year, Garth went from the rear of the field to finish fourth. And in fact, Mark Scaife in race two last year started from the back of the field and went on to win. Now, here's an interesting fact to keep in mind all day today. Seven times in the last ten years, the winner here at Oran Park has gone on to win the championship. Russell Ingle carries our onboard camera. We have a whole bunch of cameras through a range of different cars in the field, including Max Wilson here in the WOW Racing WPS Ford. And it's interesting you talk about the wiper there before, Mark, because what a race like this does, Cam McConville, super cheap auto onboard camera, it highlights all the little things you need to manage going into Sandown and Bathurst. Craig Lowndes carries a camera and the team Vodafone forward. Great drive yesterday to come up from 23rd to 7th. You need to make sure the wiper system's functioning. You need to make sure that you've got all the demisting fluids throughout the inside of all your screens, all the rain -X to make the water bead over the screen. You find out all about where water does and does not get in, in and around your car. And typically in the endurance races, at some point, we will get you know, a water issue, so it's a good rehearsal for them here. Mark Scaife, an onboard camera, great job yesterday. There's Tanda. Starting from 27th, Shane Price and Jack Daniel, uh, Jack Perkins rather had their problems. Only took eight rounds before I called Jack Perkins Jack Daniels. 
You can see the amount of water sitting up on the road there at the moment. You'll see drivers searching for non-standard race lines, trying to find grip. Rick's a long way further back from the line. We've had a couple of people ask us about the rules here. The deal is the front wheels must be stationary when the lights change and you're not allowed to be further in front of the white line. So you must be on or behind the white line. 31 cars. Shane Van Gisbergen has joined us. If you missed it yesterday in Team Kiwi Racing, but the rain is coming down. It will be wet and wild. Rick Kelly's got a good start. Winterbottom's had a shocker. Will Davison goes around him. So does Lowndes. Kelly versus Skate for turn one. Mark managed to recover there. Look at the dirt and water, rubbish all over the road, mud, people getting into each other, and around goes Rick Kelly. Kelly tagged sideways, three into two, doesn't go. Alan Gurr around the outside. He was left with nowhere to go. It was one of the team Vodafone cars. Now Stephen Richards gets a little bit of a touch up as well from Todd Kelly. Courtney looking around the outside at turn three. So Scaife in the lead. Win Cup, Todd Kelly, Will Davis and Craig Lowndes. Car six, Stephen Richards, black flag, pit lane drive through penalty, working on the car after the crews were supposed to vacate the grid. And Win Cup looks quick already. Look at the spray, Will Davis and slipping and sliding everywhere. The cold tyres, water on the road. Round goes Mark Winterbottom in front of the field. Manages to rotate and pick it up again. Good save. Fabian Coulthard also went off just behind him in the Team Sirame car. Good job, mate. Skate. Have a Win Cup. The Triple Eight cars are quick. Oh, squeezed up to the wall for Todd Kelly. Wipe the mirror off it. Here comes Win Cup down the inside. Better traction off the final turn and takes the lead of the race. Lowndes runs with him. Take a look at the water on this track. The mud flies at the end of turn one. Wing Cup turns it into two. Then it's Scaife, then it's Lowndes. I think Rick Kelly's going to come in and have a look and see whether there's any damage on that car from what I can gather. Oh, Wing Cup very wide into three. Scaife is under maximum attack. So the two triple eight cars have grabbed first and second, then Scaife, Todd Kelly. I think before I noted that it, I said car six when I was talking about that black flag, it's car 26, Alan Gurr. Didn't catch all the details on that one. It's not uh, Stephen Richards, it's Alan Gurr. Take a look at Jason Richards, car number three. He started from position 11, so he's made up some numbers as well. Davison and Stephen Richards continue their argument. Well, talking of arguments, I tell you what, there was a Tim Edwards, the boss in FPR, after hearing there was going to be a black flag for car six, was saying, who touched the car? Who touched the car? No one. We didn't touch the car. Then it was clarified. You should have seen them. Whew, utter relief. So Jamie Wincup. Look at Jason Richards is quick here as well. That car's well matched to these conditions, and he's up the inside of Mark Scape and makes the move amount of dirt on the road down there. If you look at these cars at the end of this race, they'll look as though they've been through a sandblaster. They're short shifting, which means they're not using all of the 7,500 available revs because they don't want to burst the rear wheels into wheel spin. Up shifting early. So what have we got? Jamie Wind Cup leads, nearly three seconds. John Bow has a black flag and a pit lane penalty and working on the car after the one minute board was shown at the start. So John Bow is going to have to come through the lane. Look at this, Stephen Richards, Todd Kelly. It's a bit willing here. Woof. You're on board that's with Rick, Rick Kelly. So that's what happened to Rick Kelly at turn one. You'll watch the car behind the team Vodafone car. So Stephen Richards gets hold of Win Cup, who then gets hold of Kelly. Yep. And the Richards incident was forced, or as a result of, contact with Todd Kelly. Yes, yeah, so Win Cup was really uh, just the meat and the sandwich there. 
just cannoned from one car to the next. Wind Cup's the fastest man in the field, 123.5. He's got a four second margin over his teammate Craig Lowndes. Then it's Todd Kelly. Here he is. Jason Richards is very quick at the moment. Here's the margins. Is Todd Kelly, Will Davis and Greg Murphy, Jason Bright, Stephen Johnson, Mac, Max Wilson here being passed by Lee Holdsworth. Then James Courtney's moving up the field quickly from Canto. There's Canto. And Mark Winterbottom recovering. So Holdsworth now has 10 spot. James Courtney started 19th. Car number 25, Jason Bright's going to get a black flag pit lane drive through penalty. Again, crew members working on the car after the one minute signal was given on the grid. So Jason Bright will tour the pit lane. In the four laps that we've had, Bright has made up four spots, so they're going to tumble down very quickly. Now, the compulsory pit stop window will open shortly, but I doubt whether too many people will come in because all it'll do is put them on cold tyres. I think they'll just run for a while now and see what happens. The last thing you want to do now, once you've got tyre temperatures and pressures up a little bit, the car's started to function better and you understand what the conditions are, is to put you back out there on a cold tyre or a cold couple of tyres. That'd be disastrous. New fastest lap of the race, Jamie Wincup, 123.3. 4.2 second lead from Lowndes. And you'll begin to see grooves in the road from the wheel tracks here that are less wet than the verges of the racetrack. Still heavy wet out there at the moment, exiting turn three for Max Wilson. He's having a good run in 10th. Oh, Courtney, very wide down there at four. Look at Jason Richards. Our Kiwi viewers are going to be loving this. The exit of turn six, he's all over the back of Todd Kelly, so he's on target here to slot up to third. And Tander's complaining of no grip front or rear in his car. And this is on this one, isn't it? Richards just cruises by in the end. Good work. Oh, Kelly wants to buy back into it up the straight. 22-5 for Jamie Wincup this lap. Richards up the inside here. He's ideally positioned for turn one. He's got that move done. That's another spot for the Kiwi from 11th up to third. Massively difficult conditions. Very difficult when you're tucked in behind another car. Kelly's searching wide of the race line there for some grip. Neither of the HRT cars look particularly strong in these conditions, so if we have wet weather persisting today, they'll need to come up with a change to match that. So Murphy. Safety car, we'll go past the safety car, try and get our lap back. Uh, so we'll stick it out a couple of laps and just see if we can unlap ourselves before we retire it. Yep. They must be confident that the conditions are just going to stay the way they are, so they're taking the gamble that we'll just whack the tyres on, run clean to the end and deal with what we've got. I don't think it's going to dry up much. It's still consistently raining out there. Mark Scope's going to do the same thing. Well, they've got to be super careful here, Matthew, is on the concrete. The grip level difference between the bitumen and the concrete is diabolical. That was close. No dramas for either Lowndes or Scaife. Got a quick squeeze at the radar before you ride. It doesn't look as though it's going to dry up any time soon. Tremendous amount of puddles on the track too. It's not bothering Jamie Wincup. He's just done the new fastest lap of the race, a 122.2, and we'll see what lap time this yields. It's a 21.6. He's got a very big margin now. The computer still hasn't cleansed on this lap to show that Lowndes has gone into the pit lane, so it should leave Jason Richards in second. 
Boys, that incident on the first turn involving Rick Kelly, word from the officials is that that is not being investigated. And Greg Murphy just came into the garage a moment ago, thought he had a rear end problem. It appears as though he had a puncture. They've actually changed the tyre. He hit the wall at some point around the circuit. Two penalties for Team Bright Tech. Chris Jules, team principal out here. Is that a fair cop? Yeah, it seems to be. Um, we were trying to adjust the pressures as the two-minute board came out. Just a last-minute adjustment based on the feedback from the drivers. And it seems we've gone just past two minutes and unfortunately got a penalty for it. It's a bit of a shame. Jason's car's very fast, but it's going to be a long race in the wet, so hopefully we can pick up a few more spots. Thanks, Chris. Cheers. This is the move that Jason Richards put on Todd Kelly a lap or so ago and put him up into third position at that time. He was on him for a lap. Finally made the move around about turn 10. And then they drag raced it down to turn one. A lot of speed in the Tasman Motorsport car number three. And as a result of the pit stops, Richards Jason, that is, is now second as Jack Perkins comes in. Ready to fire. Cam McConville in car number 50. Splashes through the water at the end of pit lane or the rejoined part of the circuit. There's Alan Gurr who had to take evasive action on that turn one incident, otherwise he would have T-boned Rick Kelly. Wing Cup's times keep dropping every single lap. And nowhere near the 108s that they were doing yesterday, of course, but he's down to 121.5. He's got an 11 and a half second lead over Jason Richards. Incidentally, Lowndes, after his stop, has rejoined 25th. So it's going to take a while for us to get a read on how the field cleanses here. Courtney Service. And now Jason Richards has caught up in a bit of traffic there. Look at him. He's Come zeroing through the field and found himself parked behind Jack Perkins. Now he's not got to negotiate Cam McConville. It's interesting to contemplate how strong the Triple Eight cars are in these conditions and how much weaker the HRT cars have been. It's a real reversal of yesterday's form. So maybe HRT didn't go for enough of a wet setup. and Jason Richards to the pit lane. So we saw it there from Cam McConville's car, and you can hear, listen, he hasn't even, he still hasn't got to 100% throttle, so it's just gently, gently through each of the gears. And Todd Kelly in behind. And that's a good warning to Jason Richards about the pit lane slipperiness. Often drivers overshoot. Once they miss the marks, it makes for a very slow stop. Way you go, mate. Way you go. Watch your pit lane speed. It's a game of centimetres down there. Kelly had to go in in front of Richards as Richards was pulling out, but both teams did it well. Some of the cold rear tyres, just zero grip as they leave the pit lane exit. Will Jamie Wincup to at least stay out there? I, I've just got this feeling that running a longer first segment for Jamie's not a bad plan at the moment. He's come in. He's come in right now, I'd say. That's he Craig Lowndes. So we'll find that our race leader, Jamie Wincup, has pulled into pit lane. There he is. Remember, he had a huge margin. The gap when he came in was 15 seconds. Jason Richards is next in the queue. Great work, mate. You were blast. Listening, everyone, mate. Nice and smooth. Comes out and finds a bit of traffic. It's around Steve Owen in the Autobahn entry. He's got a bit of a love tap there. That was from uh, turn one, turn two, lap one. 
but good signs for Triple Eight and good encouragement as well. So Rick Kelly, who hasn't taken his stop, and he's on warm tyres, wind cup on cold rears, obviously. Takes a little while for those just to settle. There's Paul Morris, who's 12th on the road, but problems for Will Davison. Another car looked as though it was tangled up in there. Davison second in the queue. So that's going to cost him dealing. Mark Winterbottom's got some speed at the moment as well. He's sixth on the road, fastest split to the second sector. And the new leader of the race is now Lee Holdsworth from Max Wilson, Stephen Richards. And someone else has gone round there. I think that's Rick Kelly, yes. Well, it's not, hard. it's not easy to grab reverse, but what a dicey situation. At the top of the hill. Look at Loud sliding his way over the rise. My heart was in my mouth when I saw him park sideways at the top of that rise. Kelly's got it back together. Jason Bright's just done the fastest lap time, 121.1. This young man has the lights on, or one of them's working. As he pushes through the field, trying to make up as much time as he can before having to dive in for his compulsory pit stop. Got about 12 or 13 drivers yet to pit. Centre adjustment there. Go! Speed brace on the side of the car. Good job, boys. Thank you. Dean Cato finished third, uh, 18th yesterday. Four laps down, 34 to go. So he dropped a few spots from his qualifying. Now he's going to find traffic oh. in the form of John Bauer, Mark Scaife, and Stephen Johnson. Kanto's gone, Scape's gone as well. You can see that coming. They're all skating down there into one. Scape was crossed up. Oof. People going across the bow of the car. Oh. Back out with Van Gisbergen. And away he goes again. for Rick Kelly. Bye bye. Watch exiting traffic, mate. Watch for exiting traffic. At least he's relaxed about it. You just know, don't you? Well, he's having one of those days. Sometimes you just got to wear it and get back out there, and that's exactly what he's done. It was persistence that won him the championship. There's Greg Murphy's front left guard. Damage. Yeah, and it's uh, it's just the lower mounting is obviously broken or popped off and just the back of the guards hanging off turn two an incident here scape trying to pull up not whack the back of john bow but in doing so locks the rear brakes tags dean canto round they go this was the previous lap canto was on cold tires at that stage he'd just come out after completing his pit stop look at scape trying to hold it hold it hold it they both ended up losing it well, Matty, you're spot on there with Mark Scaife. Just spoke to Rob Starr, uh, the team manager there for uh, Holden Racing Team. He said Scaife's car's got real problems. They just can't get it sorted out at the moment. Mark's got his hands full. <laughs> he almost had bigger problems. Shane Van Gisbergen coming around now. They'll just try and repair some damage here. Yeah, that was like Murphy's. Yes. And, and uh, they may well look at Mark from the point of view of a dangerous oh, re-entry there down at turn two. That was Greg Murphy saying we might as well leave it. 
Now, Rick Kelly had that spin. We saw him parked at the top of the rise on turn 11. This is what happened. Whoa! I think he might have got a touch there from Paul Morris. But I'm not 100% certain of the facts there. There it is from the other angle. We're certainly very close down there in the final corner. And uh, taping up the Murphy guard. Fastest lap of the race, meanwhile, Jason Brown. One minute 20.4. This is not much point going back now, but I reckon now we're a couple of laps down. Hendo, you're not on radio, mate. Jeff Gregg talking to Steve Henderson, talking to Greg Murphy. The first instructions are pretty clear. Don't worry about it for the rest of this one. Let's regroup for race three. It's been two steps forward, one step back for Murph this weekend. Jamie Winkup is eighth on the list, but first of those to have completed the compulsory pit stop. Remember, he had about a 15 second gap when he went in over Jason Richards. So Holdsworth, Winterbottom, Wilson. By four and a half seconds for the getting a fairly good run behind you. Jason Richards is pit two. Ingle, Wills, Owen, Paul Morris yet to pit. Jason Richards. Jason Bright, who is immediately behind you, has not done his pit stop, so he is not more position. Okay, here comes Ingle. She's going to mention that Jason Richards, when it all settles down, Richards will be second behind Wing Cup. And Lee Holtzworth has now done his time in pit lane. So that makes Mark Winterbottom our leader on the track. Not as much water sitting on top of the road at the moment. You can easily see that. Ingle's taken the compulsory pit stop. Well, Greg Murphy, life doesn't get much tougher. You've been banged from pillar to post today. Yeah, um, I, don't, I can't understand why they black flagged us. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The guard wasn't going to come off. It wasn't danger to anybody, so blows me away what uh, some people think sometimes up in the decision box. It's amazing. Tough day, mate. Oh, yeah, you know. And it's a tough day, but, you know, we were going all right. It, Hit the wall and got a flat tyre, which, um, you know, put us at the back. But, you know, we were just waiting for something to happen. We might have been back in it but to get some points at least. But uh, we get ruined by the, the powers of beat. Not good. We'll see for race three. Thanks. I was going to ask you that question. Does it, I mean, what chance was it of coming off? Zero. It is a bit unusual, I thought. I mean, there are some times where you've got, you know, plastic things. We actually sought some clarification on this topic in... in oh, that was very close there for Russell Ingle. Very wide at turn eight as to what, what the line is where you draw it in the sand with loose bodywork. It's obviously a very difficult thing to do, but I mean, where the mudguard's attached and how it's attached when you know the way they are affixed to the car, I would have thought there was no big drama, but there you go, that's, um, that's just how it is. And there's been pretty firm rulings all year on loose bodywork of any description throughout the race meeting, so I guess that's a consistent application of it. You're on board with Craig Lowndes who on corrected will be third. On the road, he's ninth. Here's an incident for Holdsworth. Remember, he just went out with the new rear tyres that were cold, so he slipped off the road before they've come up to temp. You know, that's disappointing. When he rejoined, he rejoined top five after his pit stop. Right, he's uh, not the position, mate. He's been, he hasn't pit it yet. Campbell Little talking to Craig Lowndes. And Jason Bright got a uh, drive-through penalty for having crew uh, on okay. the uh, on the grid. So did Alan Gurr. Big bite out of the front left corner of Todd's car. You just hear Lowndes there asking Campbell Little to tell him what's going on behind. I can see in front, he said, what's going on behind? Well, for those who are challenging him, Todd Kelly is the closest. 
Well, boys, the rain has got the crews in pit lane on their toes at the moment. Lee Holdsworth's pit stop was a lightning 3.6 seconds. Remarkable. Andrew Jones had a stop of 3.9. Jason Richards did it in 3.9. And Stephen Richards did it in 3.9 seconds. They're on fire down here. Just went and talked to the officials at the end of pit lane. The boys looking at the radar, of course, making sure that they stick to that 40k speed limit. With the wet tyres, they're a larger diameter. They actually expected a few of the teams to go over. You've got to go over four times before a penalty will be issued. At this stage, no one has gone over, not once. A different outside diameter for the wet meets. You've just got to manage that a bit carefully if you're right on the very edge of your 40k pit lane speed limit. You fastest lap of the race, Jason Richards, who on corrected terms will be second in this race. And on corrected terms, the man that we're looking at in car four, as Jimmy Stone looks on, James Courtney should be around about fifth. Look at how unorthodox James's lines are around the racetrack. He's just searching high and low, just looking for grip anywhere he can find. It doesn't matter what's pretty and what's geometrically nice to drive the car around the, the circuit in the shortest possible distance. He's just looking for grip, and that's what's yielding lap speed for him. Bit of race tape flapping in the wind at the back there. Brand new car, christened yesterday with oh, damage at the front and the rear. It did a, it did a, uh, it was like a freestyle motocross act down in turn three with the rear of about six feet off the ground with about seven cars underneath it. Hasn't he found himself in some awkward situations this year, James Courtney? Pole position in the first round at uh, the Clipsal 500. Everything started beautifully. He was on the podium there and then some big whacks at WA. Also had a big one at uh, Easter Creek. Still a long way to go here before the compulsory pit stop window closes, by the way. So those that are yet to take their stop have still got a while longer to make their decision as to what they're going to do. Mark Winterbottom's completed 20 laps. It's been a topsy-turvy season for James. Not, not an ideal run for him, second year in the championship. But glimpses of great speed some places but uh, some rotten luck in a couple of others the, the other one was darwin wasn't it yeah where he turned a turtle up at turn eight a good run lately for will davison no. who's top 10 in the championship his last six races have all been top 10 finishes probably would have been more but he was caught up in all that Hoo-ha in race one in Darwin. And here is Jason Bright, who is going to push that window right to the edge. So Winterbottom Wilson, Simon Will, Steve Owen and Bright. Yet to pit. What's really interesting here, Matthew, is that when you look at the bottom of the timing, Tander, Scaife and Kelly, 24, 25, 26. Okay, Jamie, nice and easy, wide into Craig's garage, into Craig's garage. What side is the problem, the right or the left? Wind must have a problem. The right front. Uh, they got a breakage, look at that. They got a... Looks like it's got no steering control on the front right corner for some reason. Broken steering arm, maybe. They're going to put him in... Craig's garage. Six guys over the line only, please make sure it's six guys. Kevin May okay, was in the left rear of the car. Neil, Neil, you talked about the broken steering. You're right on the money. They had some contact with Jason Richards battling for position. Broken steering is the call. Battling for position. And from his teammate's car, we should get a view of it. Jason Richards goes the inside line. Whack! effectively puts him in the lead of the race but with damage in the front right corner and does that put a question mark over that move certainly Richards was completely alongside however he was locked up and sliding and he's ended up using wind cup as a buffer more trouble Jason Bargwana problems front left corner for his car as well the uh, left front flat made or steering broken or something not sure from where I stand, I've got smoke coming from the bush now. It doesn't look like the steering's broken. The tire's rubbing. Does the car feel OK? No, I'm coming in, mate. I can't hear it. Tire's certainly up. Yeah, Barry, so you reckon he... <laughs> it's 
a tough little manoeuvre, yeah, isn't it? Right. Especially when you've got no steering. Now, let's take a look at this wind cup situation again. That's Jason Richards on your right. He'll make contact with the front right. Well, it was actually Jason's left rear in the front right-hand corner of the wind cup's car. So I think he'll get away with that one. I don't think it's too much of a drama, but it did look a bit odd from the other angle. Marks has made his own call here and decided he's coming in. Knock it out, guys. Leave the front bar on it. I thought he had a golf club down there. Slide hammer. A nine iron. And a boot for good measure. Bad sportsmanship flag for Jason. He's trying to get that guard away from the front left of Barguanas. And this will show us what happened here. Shane Van Gisbergen's also in that picture. There's the little rub. Enough to push the guard onto the front left. Tander's got some sort of a problem as well with his throttle at the moment. He's having trouble on the downshifts. Looking at the computer, you see all those guys, Gaif, Tander, Rick Kelly, just languishing at the back of the field. The cars are dogs in the web. And that Jason Richards incident up against Jamie Winkup, there's a couple of things out of it. One, that Jason Richards will now take over the race lead at the end of the compulsory pit stop window. But the other thing shows us is that he made up a hell of a lot of ground there as well because Wing Cup did have a pretty big advantage. Jamie. Yes, I know, mate. Jamie Wind Cup's with me now. That's disappointing. Yeah, very disappointing. We're running pretty strong there. We got off to a great start and the uh, both Vodafone cars are running really strong. And uh, Jason Rich has come down the inside of me and bashed into the front wheel and broke the steering. So, uh, unfortunately, that's, that's the end of the race too. Roland came over to you and said who hit who first. He was after a bit of clarification, I think. Yeah, no, there's... I don't know, I'm going to have to look at the footage, but uh, very, very disappointing because we're running strong and uh, we sort of got cleaned up, but I suppose that's motor racing, I guess, and, uh, you know, we'll fight back in race three and try to get some points. Thanks, John. Thanks. Tough day at the office for Paul Morris. Of course, he had that wiper problem earlier on. He's got a clutch problem at the moment. When he came into pit, they couldn't actually stop the wheel spinning and they got into some trouble changing the wheel over at the time, and he's still fighting clutch problems out there. All right, thanks, boys. Lee Holdsworth continues to uh, make the timing monitor flash. He's put down the fastest lap at 120.12. And it's pretty consistent in the sectors. Here is Mark Winterbottom, who is the on-track leader from Max Wilson, Simon Wills. Garth Tander's in front of him. Tander has pitted. Kelly getting by Mark Scaife. Nice and clean. And now Winterbottom has got by Tander. Got a bit of a handful too. Boys just come out of FPR with Tim Edwards, the team boss, and said, why have you left Mark out so long? Simple answer. His lap times are still fast. No point putting cold rear tyres on the thing and get him to go slow. Yeah, I reckon that's not a bad strategy for him just at the moment. He's still rocking along very quickly at the moment. His fastest lap's been a 120.4. He's got an eight and a half second margin over Max Wilson. Alan Weber, an interested onlooker this weekend. G'day, Alan. Son Mark having a better run in more recent races in the Red Bull Renault. Craig Lowndes is getting closer to the back of Jason Richards, so this could be an interesting battle. That is Jason Richards immediately in front. So this is one that's going to be very interesting. Lowndes, we know, is strong in these conditions. We know that Jason Richards has had a good car. He's steamed through the field. There was the question mark we raised earlier over the passing move down at turn four, but I don't think there's going to be any great issue over that. Nothing's come up 
from race control on it so far. He was well wide at the apex, but he was a long way past the car. I think it was just one of those things that happens. Here's Stephen Johnson and Steve Owen. Oh, at the end of turn one. Does he get it back on? Can he get it back on? He does. Ooh. Jason just skating through turn six here. Lowndes has a rush at him down through seven. Look at the different lines that Richards is using. Staying well away from the inside where the track's well worn. Tony Perich, the circuit owner, gave me a note this morning too to say that they'll definitely be racing at Oran Park next year. They have a contract with V8 Supercar and they've made application to continue that relationship in 2009 for those of us wondering about the future of the race track. suffering, so we just got to work on that. 19 to go. Okay. Lee Holdsworth has taken the times underneath 120, 119.65. Will be fourth, so that little excursion that he had didn't cost him too much. Little blip, whoop, there's he, another. That was very close then for Jason Richards. He was so close to skating off into the no grip zone on the outside of turn five at the bridge. His rears are looking a bit ordinary. It's a matter of time, Lowndes is gonna get him. Craig Lowndes and Jason Richards in front of these guys are trading blows. Here's James Courtney. So Winterbottom was leading the race. That's his compulsory pit stop. We'll see how it plays out when it's all gone down. But now Lowndes here has got it done. He got by Jason Richards. He was looking and looking and looking, wasn't he? You could see it was obvious that he was going to pass him down the main straight and uh, off the final corner. He had tons of speed. And Jason in the last lap or so has been skating a lot at the rear of the car and uh, he got the job done. So no real surprise in that. And through he goes. And once the whole field has taken the CPS, that'll leave these fellas in command of the race. And I don't think Richards is going to have a response to Lowndes now. Craig Lowndes took his compulsory pit stop on lap six. Jason Richards was in three laps later, so there's not that much difference in terms of tyre wear. There is Mark, uh, so Todd Kelly rather. Carrying a few bruises on car 22. That would go through the field. Shane Price, yet to pit. Lee Holdsworth, 119.495, the fastest lap of the race. Just some good news for Mark Winterbottom, that pit stop, one of the fastest of the race, 3.8 seconds, lightning fast. And speaking of pit stops, Paul Morris just pulled in, just getting out of the car. We believe it may be that clutch problem he's been suffering for a few laps. Did you check out those times of Lee Holdsworth? This is the move that Lowndes put on Richards down the straight. And that was a move that actually had its origin some three or four turns before that. He was looking at the rear of Richards, knew that he had the pace to get by him, waited for the opportunity and took it cleanly. Holdsworth continues to be speedy in the number 33 Valvoline Cummins entry. Seventh at the moment. We're still waiting for one more driver now to do his compulsory stop, and that's Max Wilson. There's Lee. Now showing fifth as the remaining drivers. John Bowers just done his stop. Rob on cold tyres couldn't get it turned in. Turn two. So when Max takes his stop, it'll be Lowndes from Jason Richards, Todd Kelly, Holdsworth on screen at the moment. Then Courtney Winterbottom, Stephen Richards and Will Davison. 
doesn't the wet change the rhythm of the race and all of a sudden it puts the all the crews under immense pressure you know, every chance that we'll go to sand down for the 500k enduro and you know springtime in melbourne is always likely to yield a little bit of rain here and there and so this is a very valuable wet practice for everybody Copy that, James. Will do. Paul Dumbrell, virtually aquaplaning. There was that much junk coming out of car 20. Jason Barguan is back out there. We, and he goes again, Dumbrell. And here is Max Wilson, the WPS entry. At, at the current rate, Lee Holdsworth is going to actually get into some of these guys ahead of him because he's five and a half seconds behind Todd Kelly. But he's just on the last lap of the race. He's braining him at the moment for lap speed. 19.3, 1 minute 19.3 for Lee Holdsworth. Max Wilson done and dusted, the Wow Racing Ford. So he's the last of the runners to take their CPS. Paul Morris is back in the garage. Paul, tough pit stop. You had some clutch problems, you got some engine problems. A few dramas, yeah, bad pit stop. We let the car down without doing a wheel up and then uh, got an engine, for, engine misfire now. Paul, I've got to ask you about the auto action survey where you were voted the dirtiest driver on the on the paddock. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'll probably have to go have a shower. But, <laughs> no, it's great. Um, I love it. I'm proud of it. And um, the fans have uh, reacted in the right way. They're right behind me. So I reckon all the other guys are a bunch of pussies. So it's good. <laughs> all right, mate. Keep it clean. Keep it dirty. <laughs> uh, he... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's embraced it so much so that he went and got some dirty, dangerous dude T-shirts printed good and one. is selling them at merchandise, so good on him. Good one. He's also having some fun in those Aussie racing cars here as well. He lets it really hang out. Take a look at the uh, fastest lap times of Lee Holdsworth. He continues to punch them out. 119.341 is the fastest. It's not just the fact that he's... He has the fastest, it's the fact that he keeps pushing them out, lap after lap after lap. Yeah, now just to put that in perspective, 19.7 on the last lap for Lee Holdsworth versus a 20.4 for Craig Lowndes. What's the replay reveal for us here? Uh, that was just Paul Dumbrell earlier. Oh, he got a bit of a tap from one of the toll cars. That thing has been a real handful for Paul Dumbrell. I saw it on one of the wider shots before when... He's going left, right, left, right. So it must have been Garth Tander who's in front of his teammate Rick Kelly. But they're down in position 19 and 20. Gary Rogers, your young bloke's going all right. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I mean, it's pretty rugged conditions out there, but his lap times keep coming down. And I think it was a good call for the boys to wait for the pit stop. It's given us tyres. It took a bit of while to get it in the heat back in them. But once that was up, he's really doing, you know, very, very well. Will he be on the back of this pack real soon? Can he mix it up and uh, get a, a, grab a podium? Well, who knows? I mean, he is catching him, but there's not a lot of laps left. But I think he will catch him. But catching and passing are two different things, as we well know. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's not a bad strategy, and it was the one that I alluded to earlier, 19.2, another fastest lap for Lee Holdsworth, that um, if the conditions weren't going to vary too much, which nobody ever knows the outcome for that one, the longer you run on the first segment, fresher your tyres are for the second segment. So the benefit that Lee's got at the moment is he's basically got traction at the rear of the car where others are starting to feel the effects of tyres that are feathered up on the edges. So he stopped on lap 16, Lee Holdsworth. And many of the others, of course, were in somewhere in between about laps 5 and, and 12. The majority of them probably in the first 10 laps. So just that little edge of extra grip that he's got can be helping. And remember he found the dirt too. This is talk to and from Todd Kelly. Yeah, talking to Matty Crawford. He wants to know where Jason Richards is relative to him. He's six seconds behind Jason Richards at the moment. He's four seconds clear of Holdsworth, but Holdsworth is catching. This is the only one of those cars from the HRT HSV stable that have got some lap speed. The other three are really languishing at the moment, but Todd's been able to rock along. And look at this. That's the margin between Jason Richards and Todd Kelly. Mark Winterbottom's actually just done the fastest split to the end of the second sector. And you can see the road's in much better condition now than it was earlier. But the problem with the wets, if you've had them on for a long time, 
and you've been working them hard, you feather the edge of the blocks on the tyre tread and um, they, they lose grip as you begin to lose that edge. Positions five and six. Somebody's just gone off up the top there, Paul Dumbrell. Okay, copy that. Found himself yesterday, but a little bit deeper. He's having a shocker, isn't he? Mark Winterbottom, fastest lap of the race now, a one minute 19.2. Only one one hundredth quicker than the time set by Lee Holdsworth. Rick Kelly was asked to be very careful near his teammate Garth Tander. He responded, uh, I've got ability. So, so there, there's a bit of a general unhappiness in the universe there at the moment. Down that end of the grid. I haven't been down there all year, 18th and 19th. 6.4 seconds is the margin, uh, Craig Lowndes to Jason Richards, and so Lowndes, barring a mistake, is going to walk this one in. These are the sort of conditions where he always excels. You can almost bet your house on it. What a recovery from 23rd to 1st. Here he is, turn eight. spin. Lowndes has won two races this year on target for three and this is the 22nd race of our 37 race championship. Lowndes has stepped the margin out now to 7.7 seconds and he's got a lot more lap speed than Jason Richards who I think is vulnerable. Richards is vulnerable to Todd Kelly at the moment. Yet again, another fastest lap time from Lee Holdsworth, 1.19.09. This is what I was just talking about, Jason Richards losing lap speed, rear tyre condition will be poor for him, Todd's all over him, and Lee Holdsworth, a glimpse of him in the background, he'll be in touch with this battle straight away. And I think, Neil, you might want to watch the Richards car too. Word has it, he has a fuel light on. I just went to check with Wally Story, I said, are you doing another Wally Story special? Are you going to run out of fuel? He said, we have no problem, we'll, we'll make it to the end. It's a long way from the chequered flag for the fuel light to be on, though. One would think, depending on uh, where they've got that set to read. Kelly's going to get him here. If he doesn't, it's going to be very soon. And all the time, Holdsworth closing, closing, closing. Here he is. Look at this. Todd's had to go down the dirt on the right side. Locks the front right a little bit, and Jason will crisscross. He'll get back underneath him for turn four. All good news for Holdsworth, who gets closer while all this is going on. There he is in the picture now, car 33. While oh, these two squabble in front of him. Jason's going to lose this battle. He, he almost just needs to yield this one and try and just get into a nice, smooth rhythm. Yeah, Holdsworth's going to eat him as well. Sometimes it's better to not have the fight and just try and hold your position for points. See, the car didn't turn in nicely then. The rear of it stepped out as he turned in at turn eight. And so Lee's in an awkward spot here. They're side by side at the dog league, but in the end, Jason did the smart thing and just fanned the throttle. And now it kind of relieves the pressure off him. He'll, what, he, what he needs to know now is where is Mark Winterbottom? How far behind is he? And last count, that was 10 and a half seconds. He just needs to soldier on with his head down to the end because the rear tyres are obviously shot. A couple of winners out of all that. Obviously, Kelly goes up in a second. Holtzworth goes to third, but Lowndes extended his lead between first and second. It's now 9.1 seconds. And Mark Winterbottom in fifth position. He's making a late charge with a fastest lap. 118.98. The first man into the 118s. This has been some kind of drive from the 24-year-old from Melbourne, Lee Holdsworth, and also a good fight back from Winterbottom. He's 7.9 seconds behind Jason Richards and closing at a huge rate. So there could even be a change for position there. 
you'll see the caption the bottom left how many laps we've got remaining. Just over the first sector, Neil, both Winterbottom and Todd Kelly traded very quick time. So now that Kelly's been let loose a little bit from that battle group with uh, Jason Richards, he can start taking aim at Craig Lowndes, but just wonder if there's enough laps left. What's the lap speed for Todd Kelly here? One minute, 19.2, an identical time for Lee Holter, who's now searching for water on the racetrack to cool the wets. So he's going off the race line. And he reduced that, Todd Kelly just reduced that gap to Craig Lowndes by about one and a half seconds. It's down to 7.8 seconds now with seven laps remaining. Boys, the reasons we're seeing Jason Richards slip on back, just spoke to Chief Engineer Wally Story, he said, look, we opted for much, much, much more wet weather. We've just set the car up way too soft. Yeah, the back of the car's not handling it and it's, uh, it's rolling around and it's triggering a slide and that in turn hurts the rear tyres. What is interesting is as the track is less wet, because it is still a wet track, it's the FPR car, car that's now coming into phase because Winterbottom's very quick. 18.7 on the last lap as you said, sector split to the end of the first sector is a 36.6 so Winterbottom in these conditions has got a car that's far more in rhythm with the road conditions. See him off in the distance. He was five and a half seconds behind Jason Richards last time. Here he is. This car's speedy. So Lowndes is just driving his car mega straight, up shifting early, not using all the revs, trying not to make wheel spin, looking after the rear tyres. He's got margin to burn. But the rest of these fellas in second, third, fourth, and fifth, bit of an open question as to who ends up where here. One eighteen point five for Winterbottom. He's going to grab Jason Richards for sure. Two point six seconds was the gap last time, and here's a good battle between Courtney and Richards. And just as we go back to look at them, Stephen puts a move on James, and that moves him up to sixth. Courtney started nineteenth. He's now seventh. So both the FPR cars showing a bit of strength at this phase of the race. Which is exactly what they did in race one, when they finished fourth and fifth, Winterbottom fourth, Richards fifth. Russell Ingall's done a good job to recover from uh, a difficult day yesterday as well. He's ninth. And Simon Wills for Team BOC is tenth. That's probably the best run those fellas have had this year. Probably wondering. Where is the championship leader and his teammate, Rick Kelly, 17th, Garth well, Tander? Richo made a mistake and James is going to get alongside him here. Very wide at turn eight. This is uh, an awkward spot to be side by side, but James gets the upper hand again. Garth Tander, 19th, Mark Scaife, 20th. Jamie Wincup, broken steering. He's out of the race. So too is Greg Murphy's pull down. Look at that. Not the spot to be pointing the wrong way. Just heard a caution for oil and maybe turns two or three. Good drive here from Russell, ninth. And uh, you can see just how awkward it is on these days for vision out of the car. The suggestion is that the, maybe the wipers failed on this car. Sometimes the drivers don't like to use it. Over the car behind you. You've got 10 seconds on the car behind the reason that they don't like to use the wiper sometimes if there's much oil lurking around all it does is spread it so very often what you see there folks is exactly how you do you'll do an endurance race you might be in the car for an hour an hour and a half and that's what it looks like and then people say well how come you made a mistake or that's that some bloke passed or you fell off the road you go well i can't see it i don't know if you heard it that's exactly what russell said Got told he was 10 seconds clear of Simon Wills behind him. He said, I can't see anything. Don't worry about the cars behind me, it's what's in front of me. Remember I said at the beginning of the day that these are the sort of things that you need to have ironed out before you get to endurance race mode because they can, you can throw away mega races uh, for very simple reasons. 
staggering how many cars over the years have had to come in because there's uh, so much fog on the screen or the wiper isn't working or the washers are not working. Well, Neil, once again, you were spot on. Spare a thought for Russell Ingle because his wiper is officially broken. He's going to have to slug it out there against the rain and it's starting to come down just that little bit heavier. Not good news for Russell. Terrific. Now, as the rain falls again, does that, uh, does that change things and uh, will, it, will it alter the balance of this race? Because uh, Winterbottom and Stephen Richards have been quite quick. But if the road gets a little wetter again, maybe that'll change. Back to the race leader. And Jason Richards must wonder what type of race he's sort of got himself in here because all of a sudden now he's got nobody around him. Three laps remaining, gap will be six seconds. He's been dropped back to fifth spot. Okay. Lowndes has a 6.5 second lead over Todd Kelly. Make that 5.7 as Kelly crosses the control line. Lee Holdsworth, third. Winterbottom, fourth. A fair distance back in some open road, Jason Richards fifth. Lowndes tries to burn away from Cam McConville. And the two who are showing real pace at the end of the race, Lee Holdsworth and, and Mark Winterbottom, third and fourth. The way things are at the moment, this is a little bit of a recovery and a sweetener for Todd Kelly, who was the pole sitter going into race one yesterday and then got his ears boxed down to the first Warm corner. If you don't need it, mate. Tell you what, there's nothing between second and third between Kelly and Holdsworth. No, nothing at all. Half a second at the last measurement, the previous lap, and here we go. Courtney and Richards continuing their battle. Oh, James very crossed up at turn seven. This is sixth and seventh positions. And Richards goes up to sixth. Having a ripper, aren't they? You can always find someone to battle somewhere. Two full laps to go, Craig Lowndes, a 5.1 second lead. Look at this. It's nothing between Todd Kelly and Holdsworth. Rick Kelly's also reporting a wiper failure on car one. So a few people need to do a little homework on some of these issues, the coming events. And I'm looking at the lap speed here at the moment. Holdsworth uh, may be able to do something about Todd, but it, you heard Gary say earlier to Gary Rogers, Lee's boss, that uh, it's all very well to get in the wheel tracks, but it's just not that simple to be able to round up another car, particularly in these conditions where to get around the other car you need to go offline sometimes to places where there's no grip. Just want to make mention also, especially for our Kiwi viewers, of Team Kiwi Racing, Shane Van Gisbergen in 12th position. In just his second ever V8 supercar racer, he's among the points. Holdsworth and Kelly for second and third. The gap is three seconds between Craig Lance and Todd Kelly. Oh, he's got the rear brakes locked, Lee Holdsworth. He thought about it. He was wondering whether he could get down the inside at turn two, but Todd was onto it. And Winterbottom's in this too, folks. This is rapidly going to turn into a three car battle. Who has the nerves? This be Lee Holdsworth's first ever race podium. Can he get Todd Kelly? Can Winterbottom get Lee? Oh, has a look going over the bridge. So much pace in the Orcon Ford credit car. Now he goes up on the inside. Winterbottom will get third position. That's a nice drive, wasn't it? And all of a sudden, the bloke that was doing all the attacking gets attacked. So Holdsworth was the one that we thought could put a move on Kelly, and it's ended up being Winterbottom that's on the charge. And so now he may get to Todd Kelly with the sort of pace that he's showing. It hasn't bothered Craig Lowndes. It's one apiece. Nice work, mate. Nice work. Well Ford up. versus Holden this Good weekend. Job, he had the car sorted for full win.
Um, turn your heat the screen off as well. Todd Kelly second, Mark Winterbottom third. Great drive from Lee Holdsworth. It's the best finish of his career. And Jason Richards will come across in fifth. It was a three-second win in the end for Craig Lowndes. Yeah, well done, Craig. Nice drive. Nice drive. Just make sure that you've got everything switched off that you need to have switched off now. Yeah. And how is that for turning a weekend around? 23rd in qualifying Lowndes, 7th in race 1, victory in race 2. Great recovery for several people really. You know, for Lowndes, for Kelly who had a tough day yesterday and also for Winterbottom who started out practice on Friday and had some difficulty. He was only 4 seconds away at the end of that race and Lee Holdsworth still a mighty performance. Both the Richards, Jason and Stephen 5th and 6th and that's a headline performance for Simon Wills in Team BOC. He goes top 10, Van Gisbergen goes top 15, and that's where Rick Kelly is in 15th position. Garth Tander there in 17th, Mark Scaife in 20th, and the DNFs belong to Paul Morris and Jamie Winker.